now it's got to feel really, really good to finally have that Algebra 1 Common Core Regents exam done. Sorry it's taken me so long to get to it. We're going to be doing the answer key here in just a few minutes, but it's Algebra done. It's In my district, there's a few kids will say, it's bodied. I don't even know what that means. New word today was yeet. Don't know what that means, but it's weird. Anyway, uh, just in case you're wondering, my name is Mr. Kraus. I am going to be Mr. Key for the next few minutes. Now, if you were able to utilize my videos to help you to pass that regions, to feel more confident about that regions, maybe enjoy it a joke or two. Uh, I got a small favor. Uh, the only way I was able to make these videos this year, because I burned out my laptop earlier this year, was to buy a new computer. It cost me almost $2,000 because I needed a computer that could do all of this videoing without burning it out like my laptop did. So, I got a couple thousand subscribers now. I'm thinking if each of you donates, maybe a buck. Not a lot. I mean, this video alone is worth a video, one dollar of your time to watch. I know you're going to be watching this Friday night of the exam. So, if you have a little extra time, a little extra money, hit your parents up. You know, my tutoring rate's like $30 an hour. So, you figured you spent like four or five hours, six, eight, ten hours with you. Some of you even more. Maybe it's worth a buck or two. Anyway, if you got it, that'd be great. It'd be awesome to be able to purchase a few more things for my computer. If you don't, well, that's okay too. Uh, but either way, I provide this stuff to you free of charge, and I hope you enjoyed it. And more importantly, I truly, truly, truly help, hope, hope, help, hope, hope it helped you out. Okay? And we'll be doing a lot more in the future with Common Core. So if you got some younger brothers and sisters, that's great. Um, for those of you that are finishing Common Core Algebra 1, I will be going to, uh, I do Algebra 2 Common Core. I kind of skip geometry for now. I just don't have time, and I haven't taught it enough to actually feel like I'm really going to do a knockout, bang-out job with that. But I may tackle that in the future. And again, it's one of those things, if I get enough support through my, through my YouTube channel, it makes it worth my while. You know, I spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours, believe it or not, I have 400 videos, each of them uh, takes two or three hours each to get done uh, up online. So anyway, let's get started, let's get rock and roll, you don't need to hear about that anymore. Anyway, um, I'm going to pause for a second, I will be right back and we're going to get started right on these problems. Okay, here we go, let's get rocking and rolling. Unfortunately, my calculator expired a little bit, so I'm going, I'm, I just purchased the new one, um, so a new license for it, it's another 30 or 40 dollars and i'm supposed to be getting it soon so maybe in the second part of this video i'll have a calculator that's useful otherwise we're just going to roll rock and roll and see how we do okay <coughs> the first one here all they did was ask us to factor this so this is the difference of perfect squares one of my colleagues calls it dots i don't know why she's a little cuckoo anyway x squared and x squared makes x to the fourth and then, whoa, get off my screen. And then positive 4 and negative 4 makes negative 16. That one's done. An expression uh, of the fifth degree. Whoa, what happened there? I can't even get rid of that thing. Yeah, there we go. Of a fifth degree is written with a leading coefficient of 7. Well, a fifth degree just means the highest exponent is a 5, or a summation, or a sum of 5. So this has a 5, and this has a 5. So we're already down, can't be, can't be. And a leading coefficient of 7, that means the first term is a 7. So there's your answer. This problem, I'm not going to lie, I almost missed this problem first time through. Uh, truth be told, I had another guy kind of nudge me that I was doing it wrong. <laughs> that wasn't too good. Anyway, here's the trick. And this was kind of a tricky question. I think it was only, I almost think it was a dirty little trick. These are the X values, and these are the Y values. See, depending on the year depends on what you have here. Ah. So when I do my change in Y over change in X, it's going to be uh, every year, the change in X is going to be two years. So my denominators are always going to be two because the change in years is always two years. And that's the X value. Now I just got to deal with the Y value. So from 2002 to 2004, it went up 9, 10, 11. Wait, 11? Went up 12. Wow, that was embarrassing. 12. 
And then from 2003 to 2005, it went up 17. And from 2004 to 2006, it went up 19. And from 2005 to 2007, we went up, what's that, 14? 14. So the question says, which is the average rate of change? Well, average rate of change I probably should have mentioned or reminded you is really just slope, which is the change in Ys over the change in Xs. If you don't like that, just Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus Y1. Anyway, here's the smallest rate of change right there. How'd you do? Are we three for three? I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Let's keep going. Let's rock. Here we go. Uh, the scatter pop load shows the n compares the bags of popcorn and the numbers sold at each performance. Oh my god, I love popcorn. It is awesome. I don't know why popcorn has to cost four billion dollars. But anyway, there's the line of best fit right there. There's the line of best fit. And that's actually a really, really good line. And what that means is, as well, I don't know where that came from, as my popcorn sales go up, my soda sales are also going to go up. And that is a positive correlation right there. Positive correlation. And that means bank for those guys selling you that popcorn. A lot's of bank, unfortunately. The Cellular Seminar Company sold 150 tickets. And they sold them to adults and they sold them to children. So if I take the adults and I add in the children, that's how many tickets I sold. Well, in this case, that's 150 tickets. So far, so good. Let me get rid of the ones that don't make any sense. Gone and gone. So, now I remember, okay, the adult tickets, now I remember. Now I know that the, the adult tickets cost $10.25. And the children's tickets cost $7.75. And that should, money and money, add up to, what is it, fourteen seventy? It adds up to money. And that is this question. Five. Anybody five for five? Raise your hand. Oh, you over there. Nice job. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's been a really long day. By the way, I'm very sorry for getting this out so late. I had a review session with my Algebra 2 trig kids until 8.30. I think uh, I left my school, so it's been a little while. Anyway, all right, let's talk about this. Which of the following functions, which one represents a linear function? So in order for it to be a linear function, it has to have a consistent rate of change, which means it has to have a consistent change in y's over change in x's. Well, notice the x values for all of these are the same. So those really don't come into play. What you really want to be looking for is the one that has the consistent consistent rate of change for the x values, or for the y values. So notice this goes up 7. And then this goes up 7. And then this goes up 7. That looks pretty good right there for the linear. This one goes up 2. And then it goes up 3. And then it, no, up 4. Then it goes up 4. And then it goes up 8. Now, that's a pattern, 2, 4, 8. But patterns aren't linear. They're not going to be a linear. So that one's got to go. This one goes up 3. This one goes up 5. And I think this one goes up 7. And again, it's a pattern, but it's not linear. This one goes up 6. This one goes up uh, 10. And then this one goes up 14. And again, not a pattern. So the linear one is f of x. The acidity of a swimming pool is considered normal if the average pH ratings, p, is between 7 and 7.8. So if the first two readings are 7.2 and 7.6, which value of the third would keep it in this range? Well, it should be relatively obvious it's this one. If you take 7.2 and you add 7.3 and you add 7.6 and divide by 3, it should be in that range. Uh, let me grab my broken calculator here. So what were those numbers? Let me look down here. 7.2 plus... 7.6 plus that first answer, which is 7.3. I hit enter, and then I divide by 3. I get 7.34 or 7.36, and that would be in between here. So that's is correct the answer. Dan took 
12.5 seconds to run a 100 meter dash. Now, at first glance, when I looked at this problem, I'm like, well, what is this thing even asking? I even wrote a note that says, does not make a whole lot of sense. But, but, I think what they're trying to get at, and eventually, if you look into it, they're trying to figure out how long did it take them to run it. Well, if it took them 12.5 seconds, how many minutes is that? Or how many hours is that? So what, we, what they're really trying to get you to do is convert from seconds to either minutes or hours. I'm not really sure which. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 12.5 seconds and we're going to convert that by multiplying by the conversion from seconds to minutes. And it's easy. I want to get rid of seconds. So seconds goes down here and minutes goes up here. And you know that one minute is really 60 seconds. Well, having done that, then I can cross off the seconds because those go away and I'm left with units of minutes. So really what I have here is 12.5 over 60 minutes. And maybe that's this answer, maybe not, I don't know. So I gotta take my broken calculator, 12.5 and divide it by 60. And you get 0 .2083 0.2083 minutes, and that's this problem right here. Not bad. All right, we got to solve this equation. Let me let me try to blow this up a little bit better for you. There we go. We're going to solve this equation. Uh, the first thing I'm obviously I hope obvious is going to do is distribute this five. So what I end up with is. 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 5x minus 20. Uh, I want my x to be positive. It makes less problems. So I'm going to bring this 3x over. So I get 2 is less than or equal to 2x minus 20. I'll add the 20 over. I'll add the 20 over. And I get 22 is less than or equal to 2x. Divide both sides by 2, and I'm almost done. I get 11 is less than or equal to x. Well, that's not really on this page, but if you take the whole thing and just flip it around, what you really end up with is x is greater than or equal to 11. And that is right here. Choice 4. Anybody 9 for 9? Oh, so. I don't know. All right. Uh, what we got? What we got? So let's see. All we gotta do is clean it up. Oh, that's not bad. Let's just clean this baby up. We gotta get rid of parentheses. So let's do this. 3x squared minus 3. Ooh, gotta distribute that negative. Minus x squared plus 7x minus 10. Okay, we're almost done. Uh, this is 2x squared plus 7x minus 13. If I had my other calculator, I'd show you how to use the calculator for that. Um, hold on, let me, let me stop. I'll be back. Okay, okay, I took a break there because my license came through. So I was able to come over here and now I have my graphing calculator back. So now that I have my graph and calculator back, let me show you another way to do this problem, just to make sure, just to triple check. Can I triple check? I'm gonna stow any number, 2.3, I'm gonna control var, I'm gonna stow that into x. And then, why does that keep going there? Then what I'm gonna do is type in exactly what I see. So three parenthesis x squared minus one parenthesis minus parenthesis and I'm going to look over here, I'm just going to cheat down, look down, x squared minus 7x. So x squared minus 7x plus 10. I'll hit enter. Silly number. And the answer I came up with was 2x squared plus 7x minus 13. Same answer. Easy. All right, so find the range. Now, what you got to remember about range is, and hopefully you do, a range deals with the y values. 
So this, you should recognize, is a parabola that is going to open up. Therefore, the range starts at the minimum and goes up. I just got to figure out what is that vertex. I got to figure out that. Now, probably the easiest way to do that is graphically. So let me show you graphically. Just come over here, and I'll show you a different way if you want. Uh, you can tell me. <laughs> just kidding. x squared plus 2x. Uh, x squared plus 2x. Uh, I believe it was minus 8. Yep. And so what I need to do is I need to find that vertex. So what I'll do is I'll go menu, analyze the graph, and it's a minimum. So I'll just go here. The minimum's over here somewhere. Oh, look at it. There it is. The minimum is negative 1, negative 9. Now remember, range deals with the y values. So the lowest y value here is negative 9. And then it goes forever and ever and ever up. So my range is greater than or equal to negative 9. And finally, this last question, what are the zeros? Well, the easiest way to do this one is just to factor it. But because we don't like you, or because the people in New York State don't like you, they gave you 5 and 6. And for some reason, 5 and 6 confuse kids. you got to be very careful with it. It's minus 6 and plus 1. So my two answers are x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. Those are my two answers. Now, I can come over to my calculator and graph it. Uh, let me get rid of this. Nope. And go back into graph mode. And then it's x squared minus 5x. So it's x squared minus 5x minus 6. Enter. And you'll notice, look where it hits. It hits at negative 1 and positive 6. So those are your two answers, negative 1 and positive 6. Okay, kids, that's problems 1 through 2. 12, tune back in for problems 13 through 24, and then the other one's coming right afterwards. Bye. Catch you on the flip side. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you hit like. And if you got a little extra cash, hit your parents up for a little one or two dollars. Bye.